All right, Joe, we are looking ahead to the boys and girls high school basketball playoffs, and uh, we're going to break it down. But more importantly, we got some predictions, and uh, everyone loves predictions. We have to go out on the limb and take a, say who we're going to take. So let's do that, and let's start with the boys. Let's get right to it. We're going to start in Division One, and I think... I'm going to speak for both of us, and we'll kind of elaborate, but I think we both like Sheldon, but it's not quite that easy, is it? No, and crazy things happen at Old Arco Arena because of the death perception, nerves, and all that. Sheldon is so experienced. They're going for a section four peat in Division One, but Granite Bay is, is lurking out there, and so is Bella Vista and Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove is dangerous. They push Sheldon twice, but I think we're consensus. Sheldon's your section champion for a fourth consecutive year. That's a that's a record for large schools. Yeah, and like I said, if there's anyone's going to upset him, I think it would be Pleasant Grove. Let's go to Division Two now for boys. And you and I were torn on this, but we each have a different team. We're going to jump right ahead of this championship game. I've got Antelope to beat Sac. Who you got? I like Sacramento to beat Antelope, and it's a toss-up game there. You know Antelope's going to have that great red zone crowd out there, rock and rolling, so it challenges Sac High to get out there. Well-coached programs, good teams. It's going to be a battle inside if it gets to that final with Devin Young, only a freshman. He looks like a man taking on Gabe Beeler and Isaiah Ellis. That's a terrific game. If it's not those two teams in the finals, then somehow there's been an upset there, but I certainly look for Grant to maybe pull an upset if anybody's capable of that. Well, that and Burbank as well. Yeah, that would be your dark horse. My dark horse in that bracket, I do I do agree with you on Grant. I also like Rockland as a dark horse. Watch out for them. SFL tested. All right, let's go to Division three, 3 now for boys. And it's somewhere around here. Uh, there we go. Uh, I think uh, Modesto Christian is the clear class of the bracket. I'm going to go a little homer here, though. Don't don't be surprised if Castle wins this, but really it's probably Modesto Christian. I like Castle Robley to get to the final. I, I like the uh, the two big brothers there, the Stoop, you know, Mason and Eric Stuville, and they're good. Yeah. They're long. They're going to block a lot of shots. They're very skilled inside as well. But Modesto Christian is so skilled and so experienced. They've been down here before many times. That's that's your overwhelming favorite there. Uh, though it would be interesting to see if Cass Robley could pull it upset. Yeah, yeah. They got the big men there to do it. All right, let's go Division Four. Uh, you know, I think we're both in agreement. It's Colfax. We think Colfax is going to win the bracket, but I say watch out for Mesa Verde. You say watch out for who? Mike Meserol of Liberty Ranch. He's the section's leading scorer, 26 points a game. Boy, is he good. He moves without the ball. Go watch this young man play just for the sake of seeing a player play the game the right way. Six foot two guard is just dynamite, but they're new to this. Four wins two years ago, six wins last year, first time in the playoffs this year. Colfax won the Pioneer Valley League over that battle tested grouping that included Lincoln and Placer. I like Colfax to get there. And then you get the small school teams down south, Riverbank and Somerville, but Colfax. They're good. Well, great coach, Mike O'Connell. Yeah, I agree. You can't go wrong with Colfax. But again, watch out for Mesa Verde and, and, your, and your dark horse is Liberty Ranch. Okay, Division 5 now as we shuffle along here. And uh, I said earlier that if Capital Christian doesn't win this bracket, I will shave my head. I want to make that fact. I will not do that, but Capital Christian will win this. I don't want to look like you. There you go. And, you know, Central Catholic's the team to look yeah. for. They have a six foot nine post. He's a dominant player, and they've earned the number one seed because Capital Christian had two surprising losses down the stretch of the season to West Campus and Mesa Verde. Those are two dark horses right there, by the way. But I think Capital Christian comes out, refocus, re-energizes, and defends its championship in Division Five and makes a real run in North House. I think you're going to see that preseason and Capital Christian team that had some big wins. And, uh, hey, it's hard to keep that focus in a league that you're way better than everyone in. And I think we're going to see that from them, and they are going to roll. Uh, so we're just going to go through D5 and the boys. Let's jump over to D uh, to girls. We'll start with D1, and we're going to grab those brackets. And, you know, in Division One, I, I think just like Division One for boys, I think there's a clear favorite here at St. Mary's of Stockton. But, boy, you've got some teams with Oak Ridge and Kennedy and NU, Nevada Union. Uh, you know, if St. Mary's wasn't in this one, this will be a real toss-up. Yes, and we thought uh, we were unaware of St. Mary's or just hadn't really yeah. broken down the brackets and the power ratings and all that. We kept talking about a lot this season, Finity, about Kennedy and Oak Ridge in a rematch of last year's terrific championship. Lynette Johnson is so good for Kennedy, Dave Parks the coach, and then Steve White is just another, another masterful job with Oak Ridge. We like Kennedy and Oak Ridge in the semifinals getting ready to take on St. Mary's. St. Mary's is your champion. They just are so proven over the years, and St. Mary's will be in the open division for the NorCal's, so Kennedy and Oak Ridge could get into a NorCal rumble 
in the NorCal finals or semifinals, so it's possible. So, yes, but we like St. Francis. We're consensus on that. St. Mary's. St. Mary's. <laughs> yeah. No, not St. Francis. St. No, Mary's. <laughs> no, not this year. All right, Division Two. Uh, another team we think is the clear class of this bracket, and that's the Sac High Lady Dragons, um, under head coach Michelle Masseri. Y- y- you know. Well, let's just okay. We both have Sac High. Let's talk about who we think a dark horse could be because I don't think there's a lot of suspense in there. I think Deloro with Brianna Ruiz back, the strength of Stephanie Guy and Lauren Hine, Mia McGlinty. I think they could be dangerous in the playoffs. Who do you like as a dark horse? I like River City, and that's going to be interesting because they can't both be dark horses because they would have to likely go through each yeah. other in an earlier round. But uh, Jaime King, the coach, and Katie King, his daughter, they were so good last year, and they're dangerous again this year. Florin. Yeah. is a team that's really emerged. They've got post play. They've got some good guard play. They don't have a lot of depth, however. Rockland, McNair is a big team as well. But if Sack High does not get to the finals and win this thing, then, then something happen along the way. It may be in one of those big, spacious gyms like down at the UOP. And those things do happen, but we like Sack High to, to roll through this. It would be an upset. You know, they've had uh, stars in the past lead their team. This year's edition is Allie Green, who's going to um, Pepperdine. Uh, they have Kaya Durr, Z Cormay, a- Shaq uh, Edwards. They're loaded. If they don't win, I would be quite surprised. And the same thing in the Division Three bracket. I think your clear favorite there is Christian Brothers under Ron Gully, um, Anna Birch, uh, Neil Val Morris, uh, uh, Alicia Gonzalez, um, McKechnie, is McKechnie th- they're loaded. They are really guard strong, that group, but they should win it. Yeah, I agree, and this is their time, and it's been so good of an athletic powerhouse for girls volleyball. Certainly Ron Gully's done the same thing with girls basketball. Vannon is mm-hmm. certainly lurking around, and so is Rio Maricano off to a good start, and Placer has had a nice bounce back season, but would have to get through Christian Brothers in the semifinal, but we like Christian Brothers. Yep. The Falcons looking strong in girls division three. Division four, we're looking at uh, likely a Bear River versus Colfax in a finals. Um, the higher seeds, these are long time, decades long rivals. I like that as well. I think these are, are proven programs, and I'll take Bear River winning over Colfax in division four girls. Yeah, I'm right there with you. An all hill championship. Uh, how do you not take Bear River? Uh, they were the Pioneer Valley class for sure, but in a tight class with Bear River, Colfax, and uh, and Placer. So a tough league, and they're tested. All right, let's go to Division 5 now. You know, again, a, a, another clear dominant one team. It's Brookside Christian of Stockton, right? Yeah, and they've got uh, Tierra Tucker, who is one of the state's all-time uh, scorers, or certainly in the section. She had a 73-point game earlier this season. Hard to handle her as a guard. She'll come off screen. She's a, a fast-break player. That's your champion, and though we think Capital Christian could give them a real run as well. Really like how well coached Capital Christian is and good size, size inside, but uh, Brookside Christian is just a different animal for this division. Yep, division and, five. yep Capital Christian head coach Suzanne Baker has her team uh, uh, playing well, and I would see them in the championship. All right, let's go Division uh, 6 now. We'll end it with that because that's where it ends. And I think you have two teams that are the clear class of this bracket. It's Victory Christian and Valley Christian, and I've got Valley Christian to win it. Um, Lily Haggerty is their star player, but they had many good guards on that team, and uh, Kim Contreras leads away for the Lady Lions. They will take on Victory Christian. And who do you got? I like the same thing, and I think the section ought to be applauded for having a smaller school division. These are some small enrollments. Yes, the pride is just the same and the effort and the desire, but you've got some schools with 100 people. And the understanding is is that 18 bracket, nobody goes on the NorCals. They're not complaining. They say, we just want our own championship. And that championship would be Thursday, February 28th at Galt. People were wondering, well, why can't it be at, uh, at Arco, the old Arco? There's not enough room to get them in there. And they're excited to have their small school championship in a small school venue. So kudos all the way. Yeah. Well, that's our predictions. Uh, test it. We'll see how we did in a few weeks, and we'll and we'll and we'll know just how bad we were. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and we can't wait to get the playoffs started. We'll talk to you next week.